All right, then we have uh, Sung here. And Sung, he's at Private Equity. <laughs> Sung says that he sold out to be in finance. He sold out to be in finance. Uh, and then Sung? Uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm just going to regurgitate the movie. So, <laughs> yeah, I feel the same way. You know, like, um, so the, the way I, I came to 180 Church was through this movie I saw last year. And uh, right after I saw it, I went to Pastor Sam and I said, who's this Tay guy? Can I meet him? Because he sounds like my twin. <laughs> so, uh, you know, my background's the same immigrant family. Uh, High school on Staten Island, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but then, you know, I I had the same desire, the same greed, or the same chip on my shoulder that everyone else here has. Uh, and I went to MIT, studied aerospace engineering for four years, decided that it wasn't going to be enough. So I came to New York, did finance, I did research, banking, private equity. Uh, next week, I'm moving to another private equity firm. So, uh, you know, all my life, I was always in control, right? All right, so I got I got rejected by girls now and then. In terms of like the bigger things in life, right? So some of the important things, you know, like getting to the school I wanted to go to, or getting a, getting the banking job I wanted, getting the top bonus, or getting the private equity job that I wanted with a good work-life balance where I can drink in my free time. You know, all of that. I can, you know, I mean, I was at the point where I, I thought I was the boss of my life, right? I was. My sister goes to NYU right now. I'm paying for her tuition. I invested my bonuses in my mother's business. You know, whatever I could do to help my mother, my father, my sister, my friends. You know, I, I threw everything out there. Uh, and then I, I went through an experience last year where um, my mother had a, a near-death experience, and uh, that's when I really realized. You know, just to give you a background, I'm a PK. So my father's a pastor. I've been, I was born into the church. I grew up in the church. But it never hit me until last year. Uh, my mother was you know, face to face with death. You know, thank goodness she's, she's OK. And then I look back on all the years of my life and all of those goals I set for myself and all of those, those doubts I had about Christianity, about faith, about God. And, and that kind of like one, two day span, I realized that no matter what I did, no matter how much money I spent to invest in my family, or myself, or no matter how many friends I had, or, you know, all the great things I had accomplished on my resume, uh, ultimately, I had no control. Um, so that was really rough for me. Like, I, I was like messed up. <laughs> but that was the single event in my life that made me realize it doesn't matter. You know, I have no control. No matter how much I want it, it's not up to me. So. Uh, so that's what I went through. I talked to everybody and kind of met this family here. Uh, and now I find myself, you know, I asked the same questions when Pastor Sam, you know, prayed for me. I was like, wait, does that mean I have to quit my job? <laughs> <laughs> I still go out with my friends. Uh, but I've come to realize that those doubts I had, those questions that I had, uh, I used to seek answers for them. I used to find some person that I thought was a diehard Christian, trap them, and be like, well, Tell me why you think this is right. Tell, you know, give me some evidence because my father's a pastor. I know all this stuff better than you anyway. You know, <laughs> so I used to talk. I was really, I was like, I was a jerk about that. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> so, what I'm beginning to realize that is that I've been asking the wrong questions, and my doubts haven't—they're not the right questions to ask. They're irrelevant. All right. Once you realize the truth, or discover Christ. None of that matters. And that, uh, so that's my story. Thank you. So there is a point. You know, one thing I one thing I really appreciate about the guys in this church, especially Pastor Sam, is that when he's mad at you, he he will not hide it. <laughs> um, and this has personally been really helpful for me because he keeps me accountable. So, like I said, I did investment banking for two years, and I've been doing private equity for the past two. Um, there was a point where I was just so busy. I missed every single small group and every Sunday service for like six weeks straight or something, right? Uh, and he had texted me a few times, like, what's up, what's going on, where are you? He like stalks me on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Always like I adding me and stuff, so I'm just like, oh no, you know, here's Pastor Sam, I have to think of an excuse, but you know, I am busy, but I told him that last week, you know, like, 
Um, and then eventually, he just kind of texts me. He starts off gently. He goes, okay, I'm going to be a little bit harsh on you here, colon. And then he just went off on me. And uh, what I realized from that is he, he said, it's not just that you haven't physically been to church. It's just it's not that you haven't shown up at small group, but I know that Jesus is not present in your life right now. It's not just that you're not physically there. But I know the way you're living your life right now and over these past six weeks that he hasn't been in your heart, right? Maybe he's lucky, maybe he's right, but uh, I re that really hit me. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a thought process, right? I don't do anything differently from the way I used to. I still work hard. I still, you know, go out for drinks with my coworkers, right? I still go out on dates. I still go to circle, you know? <laughs> 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 He swears he likes the music. <laughs> That's the music. That's why I don't play Hero. Uh, but I, you know, I was I'm interviewing. I'm, I uh, interviewed last month for the largest technology-focused private equity firm in the world, and I got the offer in two weeks. I was the last one in the process and the first one to get an offer. And, uh, and I really, you know, e before any test, you go, you go, please God. I know I have to pray to you a lot, but <laughs> please let me pass this test because I promise you I'll go through it. <laughs> when I walked into those interview rooms, I was a mess because I had been working like 80 to 100 hours a week, working on like various deals all over the country or whatever. Um, but when I went in there and I prayed to God, I figured, okay, here comes the obligatory prayer to God. Uh, when I realized my thought process had changed, when I, when I said, God, I'm, I really want this. I really want this job, and I, I really want you to want, you know, want you to think that this is right for me, you know. But if you don't think this is right for me, I can accept that because I know I'll be fine. But you know, if this is your purpose for me, please let it work. Uh, so I, I really hope that his purpose for me is the purpose I want it for myself, right? That's what I was praying for. But but that's where I realized that my thinking is was starting to change. Uh, it wasn't just about me. It was about my purpose and his purpose for me. So, yeah, the hours were hard. Sometimes, you know, like during Easter, I would just tell my VP or tell the MD, like, listen, I got to go to church, and they would respect that. But more importantly, is keeping Christ in your mind and your heart. So, sorry for the long answer.